Hello and welcome. Uh, today I'm going to be running through the patch 2.5 full notes that were released this morning while the servers are down for maintenance. And um, I'm just going to read through them as quickly as I can, see what I think, see if there's anything to look out for, and see the first thing I'm going to do the second the servers come back up. So anyway, these are the 2.5 notes. This is the 2.5 trailer. So new main scenario quests. So I don't usually tend to read too much into those until I, do, until I actually do them. New Chronicle the Era quests. So the World of Darkness to unlock World of Darkness. Light of Hope, which I'm guessing is the last quest after you finish World of Darkness. And also this is after that quest as well. Like that, and after that. Okay. So basically, I think these four quests are after the last, um, after the World of Darkness, and then this is the quest you need to go towards unlocking the Odin encounter. And then you have here Hildebrand quests. <laughs> Always love uh, Hildebrand quests, they're just so funny. So we'll see what this is about. New Delivery Moogle quests. These are like exploration quests. You know, they send there's Delivery Moogle will just send you all over yours here, seeing all different stories around the world, so that's pretty cool. New side quest, legend for a legend. Okay, th so this quest is uh, when you get every single mount from the Extreme Primals, and to help with that, they've actually boosted the drop rate even further. So they already boosted it before, but now they've boosted it further, because obviously I'm guessing lots of people are going to be going after this quest. Then the Olnok quests for the new dungeons of the Wanderer's Palace Hard and Underpeak and the Poor Keep Hard. The other new dungeon, the um, Keeper of the Lake, is going to be unlocked as part of the main scenario. So that's what you have to do. So let's see. So uh, upon completing the quest, just tooling around, players can inquire about master crafting tomes and tools by speaking with Guiding Star in Mordona Reverence Toll. So I guess I'll be doing that. Additional rewards have been added to the following Exile Daily quests. Cool. So the difficult of difficulty of crafting isolator components, and auxiliary Oro Dynamo components in Daily Beast Tribe quests has been reduced. I guess that should make it easier for the players leveling up. So, let's see. New rewards have been added to level 45, crafting and gathering guild leaves. These rewards are items that aid in the acquisition of newly added crafting and gathering equipment. Mm -hmm. So, that is something I'm going to have to take note of as a crafter. I need to see what those new rewards are. So, it says, abandoning your guild leave are, after completing it, at least once will refresh the available rewards in accordance with this change the amount of shards obtained from certain trade craft leaves has been increased okay fair enough so it says the following items can now be obtained from boar skin treasure maps vitrol okay that doesn't mean anything moonstones can now be obtained from leather goat skin toad skin boar skin and pie skin treasure maps the amount of Rush grass obtained from toad skin treasure maps been increased. The drop, I need to pay attention to it's it's these new little snippets which can be golden basically. So I need to see what moon stars are, what they're used for. Let's see. So it says the drop rate of the following items obtained from boar skin, pie skin, and unhidden level maps have been increased. Okay, they're all the catalyst for two star materials. High quality version of these items can now be obtained. Ah, that's interesting. So there's going to be high quality coke and animal fat and so on. What they're used for, I guess we have to wait and see. So it says the rewards granted in exchange for the Grand Company seals have been adjusted. So, okay. Okay, new items have been added basically. So Yurishi. Okay, so a lot of these are. Uh, it looks like crafting materials, but yeah, the reagents are obviously crafting materials. And thankfully, I've already made my guide on my channel, which explains how to get infinite Grand Company seals. So we should be able to buy these easily. And Moonstones as well for four thousand. So I, we need to. I need to check. Basically, take a note. What is a Moonstone? What's it used for? And these rewards are going to be the same for all three Grand Companies. Okay. The following prices have been reduced. Cool. So these items. You know the old two-star items and so on they have been cut to 800 seals each 
So it says the following categories have been added under authorization and free company interface, a free wheel use retainer disbursement. So in accordance with the change, the layouts of rank and authorization windows has been adjusted. Okay. So it's just more new settings for it. So it says following categories have been removed from the authorization in the free company interface, guest book management. Fertilizing crops in the garden of your free company estate will no longer result in a message being posted in the activity window of the free company interface. This change has been made to reduce the amount of um, gardening related messages displayed in the window. Ethereal wheels have been added, which can convert stored energy into company actions. Free companies can now charge ethereal wheels in estate grounds. These wheels accumulate AFA over time, which can be used to acquire company actions without the use of company credits. Okay, so it's just an alternative. Because maybe the company credit is going to be used for something else. So it says here, in order to change... Sorry, hang on. In order to charge ethereal wheels, three companies must first obtain an ethereal wheel stand, which can be purchased from the housing merchants in any residential district. The ethereal wheels themselves can be crafted using alchemy. Okay, so as an alchemist, I'll see what the uh, requirements are to make the ethereal wheels. Because how to use an ethereal wheel. Place an ethereal wheel stand in your free company estate. Set your desired ethereal wheel on the ethereal stand and leave it to accumulate A for over a fixed period of time. Once it's fully charged, the primed ethereal wheel may be removed from the stand. <coughs> Accessing the ethereal wheel stand again will give you the option to convert the primed ethereal into company actions. Okay, so, so after converting the, the primed ethereal wheel, the corresponding actions will become um, available immediately. So, I mean, just it's not overly important this feature, but it's it's a, it's a nice to have, I guess. So it says retainers can now be placed on estate grounds outside the hall. An expansion of duties permit is required to place a retainer on your estate grounds outside the hall. These permits can be purchased from independent suitors in any residential district. One, two, or three retainers can be placed on small medium and large estates respectively interesting so we'll so say once the retainer is placed on the estate grounds items they currently have listed on sale on the market can be purchased by anyone who speaks with them the retainer's sales history up to 20 entries can also be viewed by other players placing retainers on estate grounds does not impact your ability to summon them via summoning bells to deposit and withdraw items or to assign retainer ventures that's really cool so the state grounds. So I wonder if this is also good for individual players. You know, so obviously it's not just r related to free companies. This it sounds like if you own your own house, depending on the size, you can place retainers outside your house, which can help you sell your items if people come and visit your house. So it says the position of the targeting area that appears when the chocolate bus table is selected has been moved to the signpost to improve visibility. Selecting culinary furnishing will display a dialogue prompt to confirm the parameter bonuses to be received. Cool. It says attempting to feed a Tamarian onion to a stable chocobo will display a dialogue prompt in the event that the chocobo will not increase in rank. Fair enough. So new hairstyles have been added. Just random new hairstyles. So it says the NPC Azina can now be found in more donor at Revenant's Toll. So I might have to go check it out, see why. Additional buildings have been constructed in Revenant's Toll. Cool. Because Revenant's Toll is constantly being built, so it's nice every patch that they're adding more to it. Okay, let's see. So it says, New Dungeons, The Keeper of the Lake. So this is part of the main scenario quest as well. So it says, Players must complete the main scenario quest, Best Laid Schemes. Then another new dungeon, Wanderer's Palace Hard. And the Port Keep Hard. Right, so it says, New Trials have been added. So Earth's Font, this is the Odin quest. Uh, sorry, the Odin Primal Fight, which will be fun. 
So as far as I'm aware, Odin will still be spawning out in the world anyway for the whole server to kill, but this is just an additional to that. And then battle in the big keep. This is the last fight, I believe, in the Hildebrand questline for 2.5, where you will face a more powerful version of Gilgamesh, basically, and where he's got his eight weapons, not just one. And then there's a mystery trial. So it says players must complete the main scenario quest on the counter offensive. Fair enough. So we still have to wait and see what that even is because we, we're not even 100% sure yet. So it says the world of darkness, the next raid of the Crystal Tower arc has been added. That's the last part Crystal Tower. Party role requirements. Parties matched automatically via Duke of Finder will comprise one tank, two healers, five DPS. Parties formed prior to registration must also meet these role requirements. These are some random rewards you can get. So set some gear. I mean, th these are just picture of I think relic weapons. It's just it's the armor that you want to look at. It says you can receive only one reward item per week for completing duties of the, in the world of darkness. <clears throat> in the event you are awarded an item from the loot list, you re relinquish your right to vie for all remaining items, regardless of whether you need or greed. If time expires and a reward item is obtained automatically, this will also count in the weekly limit. Okay, so basically don't just let the counter count to zero, because that will actually count as a greed roll. Each party in the alliance will receive its own treasure coffer, the contents of which will have the same possible rewards regardless of the route taken. That's interesting. Let's see, so players can now obtain an elegant catalyst from the Labyrinth of the Ancients and Psychus Tower. So, Labyrinth of the Ancients and Tower, the treasure coffer that appears upon defeating Plegiophon. <coughs> Psychus Tower, the treasure coffer that appears upon defeating Amon. Okay, so these are reasons to keep going back to the old Crystal Towers. Basically, he's adding in these elegant catalysts, which are used in used crafting recipes. So it says, upon completing one of the following duties, all party members will receive additional Algon Tombstones of Soldiery if one or more party members are completing the instance for the first time. So, Sunken Temple Hard, Snow Cloaks, Astasha Hard, all of the, the Shiva fights, the Dragon's Neck, Final Coil, 1 to 4. So, I mean, these are obviously the most recent um, dungeons in patch 2.4. So they've added a soldiery bonus to them. So it says a number of elegant tombstones received from Dungeons and Trials has been adjusted. The following duties, trials and raids has been added to the duty finder. Cool. These are obviously all the new dungeons and still the mystery trial. We don't know what it is. So it says a confirmation window displayed after being matched via the duty finder can now be saved or displayed in a notification window. Cool. So it says, in order to prevent the players from unintentionally withdrawing from duties when matched via duty finder, a confirmation window will now be displayed when selecting withdraw. Good idea, just so, because sometimes, you know, even I have personally misclicked withdraw, so that's a good idea. So a confirmation window will now be displayed when summoning a chocobo companion while registered for duties via the duty finder. Great. So it says the duties listed in the duty finder have been reorganized so duty roulette expert is always the free latest dungeons that's how they've adjusted it they put the free ones from 2.4 into the high level and for duty roulette trials they've added in battle in the big keep and the mystery trial so you, you need to have basically have done all of these fights if you want to be able to do duty roulette trials take note of that so it says the item level sync system has been reinstated in PvE encounters. Furthermore, material bonuses will now be granted to gear whose item level is below the item level sync threshold. So it says in order to maintain balance, material bonuses will be ignored in PvP encounters where an item level sync applies. In order to maintain the difficulty of certain duties, item level sync has been applied to the following dungeons. Okay, so basically most of these are mostly old dungeons so like these are like 2.3 or older so it says any gear above item level 110 will be subject to item level sync when undertaking the above duties and the reason they do that sort of thing is to make sure that you actually enjoy the fight you actually enjoy the encounter there's no point doing them if you're going to blitz through them in about four minutes you know so it says new rewards have been added to the treasure coffers in the following dungeons this is interesting 
so I'm, I wonder what these new rewards are because I, these are old dungeons. So it says the following dungeons, treasure coffers have that appear upon defeating bonuses will now yield both gear and crafting materials. Okay, that's interesting as well. So basically what they always do as well, they give you a reason to keep going back to the old dungeons and have maybe helping new players as well. It doesn't just have to be about new stuff only. So they are giving life to the old content. So it says the amount of crafting materials received, including cooking ingredients, has been adjusted in the following dungeons. The amount of crafting materials received on treasure coffers in the dungeons has been adjusted. Cool. So these are random items which you do just randomly need for crafting various pieces of furniture and stuff like that. So it says, in the event that all party members are incapacitated during the following trials, players will now receive the power of the Echo. So obviously the Echo is to buff players if you consistently lose. So for Shiva Hard, they're saying we'll raise attributes 10% up to a maximum of 50. What that means basically is that each time you wipe, you get an extra 10% to your um, HP attack power and healing potency up to a maximum of 50% and then for the extreme you get bonuses of 5 up to 25 so if you wipe 5 times in Shiva Extreme as long as you've been there I think more than 10 minutes then you eventually will be 25% stronger to help you finish the encounter so let's see the PvP encounter Borderland Ruined Slaughter has been added to the front lines Players who have yet to unlock Frontline can do so by accepting one of the following quests. Okay, so obviously you just go to your grand company to unlock the quest and you have to have already done the quest a pop no longer, which is the quest for unlocking PvP originally. And then, let's skip through all that. So, the idea basically of Slaughter is that it's quick 15 minute battles um, it says there are no role restriction on queuing. All partners must be affiliated with the same grand company. So you still queue up with your grand company. And it says when participating in frontline campaigns, there are no role requirements or restrictions of, for parties. Moreover, players can freely change jobs or classes at their grand company's landing. So you, you know th there isn't anything of like you must have a tank or whatever. You can be you can all be white mages. It's completely up to you. And then actions the if effects of certain non-pvp actions has been restricted i mean that's for, for the sake of pvp balance so it says players can increase their team's tactical raiding by defeating players from opposing teams and enemies spawning on the field the first team to accumulate the required number of tactical points will be declared the winner and the remaining teams ranked according to their respective tactical ratings that's cool so basically this is like uh you know it's almost like a glorified death match. The more that you kill the other team, the faster you win. So it says teleporters have been placed at key locations, allowing players to cross great distances instantaneously. Please be aware teleporters cannot be used to return to a previous location. Cool. So this is just like a way of getting around the map quicker. Adrenaline rush. So adrenaline rush will replace the limit break action in Borderland Ruins Slaughter. Unlike the limit break, Adrenaline Rush is unaffected by actions of party members and can be used by single players after filling the Adrenaline Gorge. Let's see, so it can then be activated using limit break located under the general tab and actions interface. The Adve Adrenaline Rush action performed will depend on your role. So, let's see. So when you use the ad the adrenaline limit, well, less <laughs> adrenaline lim limit break. I mean, that's basically what it is. It's a limit break, just for PvP. You get tags can reduce their damage taken by fifty percent to all party members. Um, melee DPS delivers an attack to a single target. Um, range DPS deals unaspected damage to all enemies near point of impact. Unaspected means basically it's not ice, it's not fire or anything like that. It can't be resisted. It's almost like a you know, an, an, another stat. So, and then healer ranged physical DPS restores 50% of own HP and HP of all nearby party members as well as cure all status effects. So when they say ranged physical DPS, they, they mean bards. So, so combat rank bonuses will now affect the rate at which Adrenaline Gorge fills. Okay. And then 
Battle High and Battle Fever. So Battle High and Battle Fever are buffs awarded for a certain number of consecutive KOs. However, changing classes, logging out and being defeated yourself will reset the counter towards acquiring either buff. So Battle High, defeat four players consecutively. Damage dealt increases by 20% and the Adrenaline Gorge fills 1.5 times faster. So it says defeat eight players consecutively. Damage dealt increases by 40% and the Orlando Gorge fills two times faster. The following will display on screen when either Battle High or Battle Fever are active. The following icons will appear next to the name of players under the effect of Battle High or Battle Fever. Furthermore, players from opposing teams experiencing Battle High or Battle Fever will appear on the map and mini-map when nearby. Okay, so this is like... Even though you get a really great bonus to yourself when you get these bonuses, they highlight you. So it's it's a way of then making the other players alert of this guy is buffed, you know, and that you know what that means. That means that they're gonna get, get targeted and zerg down first. So that that's what's gonna make it more interesting. So it says defeat well, defeat monsters. Monsters will appear on the field periodically. Slaying them will grant you stat and adrenaline gorge bonuses. The bonus granted will vary depending on monster slain. So let's see. Status haste. The the party that defeats the monster reduces weapon skill and spell cast retimes as well as auto attack delay. The party that defeats the monster for HP and MP boost and increased damage. So basically the the whole point of slaughter is that slaughter like you kill everything whether it's other players or monsters and you you will get something for doing it successfully so it says incapacitated players will be returned to grand company's landing where they will be allowed to rejoin combat after a short delay this will not incur a weakness penalty but the delay before you can rejoin will lengthen each time you fall furthermore players will be temporarily invulnerable when leaving the grand company's landing in the borderland ruins and the reason they add in things like that into pvp environments in mmos is to make sure that the other team don't basically just sit on another grand company's base and then kill them all the second they respawn so that that invulnerability is to allow you to get out so it says players are free to use mounts in frontline campaigns however players taking damage while mounted will be inflicted with heavy status effect cool so basically, if you're being attacked and you're on the mount, you're not getting away. So you, you might as well just stand and fight. That's what that is encouraging. So it says rewards. So it says all players will receive PvP, EXP and Wolf Marks, as well as Alec on Tombstones of Soldiery and Alec on Tombstones of Poetics based on their performance. Accumulating PvP, EXP raises PvP rank and the reward players with... Uh, sorry, rewards players with action points that can be used to exchange... To enhance PvP exclusive action and traits, which is just the same. I mean, the PvP EXP has been there the whole time. And so, wolf marks can be exchanged for gear and other useful battle items by speaking to one of the Maelstrom soldiers stationed at the Wolf's Den. So, it says, with the addition of Borderlands Slaughter, the Cotton of Flats Ruins has been renamed Borderland Ruins Secure. You know, so that's the difference, I guess, between Deathmatch and, um, what's it, Domination PvP settings of other games. So, the, to reduce wait times when queuing for frontline campaigns, the duty finder will no longer match players in groups of 48. That's interesting. So it's either going to be a big battle or a small one. So it says, when attacking monsters during frontline campaigns, weapon skills with direction requirements will grant combo bonuses from any position. Two ma Pass sorry, two passenger mounts can no longer be used during front lines. Players can no longer block or parry break limit attacks. The hunt has been adjusted as follows. So let's see. The allies is granted upon defeating light mice has been increased. So this is just to encourage the the hunt feature. So forty for an A rank, which is pretty good, and a hundred for an S rank. So they obviously they keep adding these bonuses to old features to make sure that they don't die out, to make sure that there is still a good reason to do them. And it says the number of allies ground by regular mark bills has been increased from four to eight, and from ten to twenty. Number of allies ground for light mark bills. This is a weekly bill that you can do yourself by going to your grand company. Has been increased from fifty to one hundred. The light marks will now drop unstained mark logs. 
instead of blood splattered mark logs. That's interesting. So let's see what are they used for. So it's a rolling out to now piece available for purchase. Cool. So these are a lot of the sort of new um, items that you can get from your grand company anyway. So it's just an alternative that you can buy them with your. Um, let me see. Yeah, that you can buy them with these allied seals. I'm assuming, this is my guess, I guess we'll see it when we get in game, is that the unstained mark logs are going to be used to purchase the items you need to upgrade your ironworks gear, which is like the same, like um, you could buy blood splattered logs before if you wanted to upgrade and buy sands of time, oils of time, stuff like that. So maybe this will be for the new ones. So it says the number of allies here required for exchange for the following items has been adjusted. Venture, 10, now it's 20. So the mid-venture is more expensive, that's interesting. Um, it says the drop rates for the following extreme primals, I mean that's only for allied seals, they made it more expensive. The drop rates for the following extreme primals have been increased. These are all the extreme mounts, so they've made it even easier. The rate at which soul glazed relic weapons achieve soul attunement has been increased, which is great. This is when you want to upgrade your relic novice to a relic nexus. Because um, at the moment you have to farm 2,000 lights, but getting those lights is tedious as hell, so they've made it easier. They said the drop rate for Alexandrite when completing a fate with a gold rating while equipped with an Animus Novus or Nexus weapon has been increased. The character name plates for Kali and Hydra have been adjusted. The battle behavior for Kalia during Arcanist class quests has been adjusted. Battle behavior of Karasu during the Ninja Bot quest has been adjusted. Now, when they say adjusted, I don't know if that means easier or harder, but uh, who knows. I haven't actually done this ninja fight yet, so that would be an interesting one. So it says improve invisibility for colorblind players. The targeting indicator for Shiva's icicle impact attack has been adjusted. So, um, yeah, colorblind players will be happy. You know, so, so new items have been added, so we'll get to the new items and new recipes as well. New recipes have been added to the Master Recipe books. So players can acquire Master Recipe books from the NPC Talon and Mordone and Revenant's Hole after completing the quest you're tooling around. In the event that you've already acquired a Master Recipe book, your crafting log will be updated with the new recipes automatically. Great for me because I've, I've already, I did them all before 2.4. So uh, when I get in game, I will be looking at all new uh, crafting recipes. So it says the following items are now available from NPC Alina in Mordona. So carbon coat, carbon wire, carbonite wire. Let's see. So the uh, I'm sure these will be used for something. So I need to find out what. So it says the NPC Talon in Mordona has been adjusted as follows. New items have been added, including gear for crafters and gatherers. The categories displayed in the dialogue prompt have been adjusted. So these new items for crafters and gatherers are the the new um, tools, they're called Lucis, and so far, looking through the notes, you know, because I looked at it before I was recording this video, it looks like it will be an upgrade of the Supra, it looks like it will be a continuation of the Supra, so um, going after the Supra previously will not be wasted, so, uh, but obviously I will confirm that when I get in game, so it says, uh, now, yeah, to the salvage, uh, Calamity Salvagers. So the Calamity Salvager is a way of buying one-time only rewards back for Gil should you lose them, should you have dropped them by mistake or whatever. You know, you can buy them back for Gil from the Calamity Salvagers, that's why they're great. So they simply added more one-time rewards to it. And they said parameters following items have been adjusted. So uh, Dreadworm Blade, they've made added one strength. Um, Direworm Claws, that's for Monk, they've added one Determination. Dyrim Spear, obviously for Dragoon, they've added in one determination. Let's see, Spirit Bomb Potion is no longer untradeable and can be sold to NPC shops or on the market board. That's interesting. It says the following items can now be stacked up to 99. So that's all the Atmas and all of the rewards that you need to upgrade your, uh, well, not the upgrade, to, to buy the item level 90. Um, class sets that drop in the new dungeons. So it says the following items can now be sold or donated to Grand Company in, in expert delivery missions. Okay, so it looks like these are all the extreme drops. Um, 
yeah so looking through this list it seems to be all the extreme drops and also all of the tomes like omni rod elder staff the ones that we could buy for the tomes when we finish the extreme primal weekly these are really old items and also it looks like all of the items which dropped in psychos tower so you can now exchange those for grand company seals and it says the scarf or wondrous wit friendship circlet and blue bird earring can now be discarded so it says the following items can now be desynthesized that's interesting so yeah and again these are the extreme primal so it's the same thing basically the extreme primal weapons or the psychos tower gear uh, it looks like they can now all be de desynthesized the items received when desynthesized the following items have been adjusted these are the rewards from the first crystal tower from labor of the ancients so i guess they've made they've, they've probably made the desynthesis materials well they said they, they've, they've been um adjusted so we have to just wait and see how which way they've done it so the level cap for desynthesis has been increased from 100 to 110 and i will be making a guide about how to do that or what item i would recommend to do that when we get in we will see as well what effect that has so it says desynthesis skill will no longer decrease if your combined skill is not at the maximum so what that means is it's at the moment when you're leveling up desynth of a second class even if you've only got one class high up there was a chance that when you level up a second class it would slightly reduce your other class you know you might get a 0.1 in decrease of another class you've already leveled that will not happen now unless you're at maximum of 350 and 350 basically means that you will be able to get free classes all the way to 100 and then have a spare like i don't know 15 um 15 points and the reason they've done it 350 rather than 330 is because when you unlock your other crafts they automatically have a desynth level of one and if you have all eight classes unlocked that means that's an, that's an extra five levels potentially lost so they could have just set the cap to 335 but they've given an extra 15 levels leeway to make sure that people can cap three classes 210 so it says the residential districts in the three city states have been adjusted as follows so new items have been added to the following shops that's interesting independence suit salter suit sutler whatever expansion of duties housing merchant ethereal wheel stuff like that so it said the icons for that have been adjusted the seasonal miscellany and minion categories have been added to the item section of the market board that's cool so that they've they've made it easier to distinguish between those sort of items whereas right now they're just all bunched together well before they were bunched together under miscellany only so new gathering notes have been added so in northern Fanland and in east shroud and it says new items have been added to the gathering points black limestone virgin basilisk egg rosemary unaspected crystals and gigant clams that's cool so we need to see what these are actually used for and i'm assuming as well that these are high levels so you're probably going to need a very huge amount of gathering or perception to get these so it says players can now obtain high quality and umbral rocks and redolent logs now my feeling for this is that this is probably going to be used to upgrade our mining and botany items from supra to lucis but again we'll have to just wait and see so uh, players will now be invulnerable to area attacks while gathering if they have not gained aggro from enemies that's great so that just means that you can't be trolled when you're gathering so it says new items have been sorry new mounts have been added new minions have been added that's always good news so it says volume achievements and titles have been added so i'm not going to read through all of those but yeah this just basically defeat odin defeat world of darkness discover all the locations dispatch let's see dispatch a certain number of enemies tool time for the hand to time for the land it said obtain disciple hand loosest tool and so on so it says guide any of the three grand companies to a total of 200 victories that's interesting so this is like now it doesn't matter which grand company you are as long as you get 200 victories then you'll get that achievement so it says the most gentlemanly pose has been added this is the hildebrand pose so that's interesting 
So it says attempting to purchase items consumed upon use. I mean, we can assume that this gets you get rewarded this after the Hildebrand quest. So it says attempting to purchase items consumed upon use that you already possess, such as chocobo barding or master recipe books, now will display. Sorry, now will cause a message prompt to display. For untradable items, a message prompt will indicate the items cannot be purchased. For tradable items, a message prompt will appear confirming if you wish to purchase the item. The online status new adventurer will now appear next to character names even when participating in instances sorry in instance duties players can now use a mouse wheel or gamepad to scroll through the body of moogle letters retain adventures have been adjusted as follows so rank 16 exploration events have been added retainer fantasia can no longer be obtained from rank 15 Retainer of Fantasia can still be acquired as a rare item from quick exploration ventures. Furthermore, in accordance with this change, the acquisition rate of items obtained from rank 15 ventures has been adjusted. So it says the following items have been added to quick exploration ventures. So these are just new colors, new dies. So it says players can now save their retainer's appearance after making changes to their appearance. Players can now access basic subcommands for window scaling and positioning by right clicking the window uh, title and using a mouse. That's interesting. So it says the pet hotbar will now automatically be assigned to hotbar 1 when interacting with objects or mounts that use the pet hotbar. Now, this is um, good because when you're on a mount anyway, you can't use abilities. So they might as well have just put it into action number 1 rather than having a separate bar. It'll make it easier as well, probably most likely for PlayStation players as well. So it says, melee and range classes and jobs will now be separated from when sorting your party member list um, or the results screen at the end of Frontline and Wolf Den's matches. So it seems so before it was like that and now it's like that. That's interesting. So it says up to three notifications can now be displayed at once. The highest priority notification will be displayed. Processing these will allow those with lower priority to be displayed. Signs will now be displayed on the enmity list, which is great. So what that means is, is that if your party group marks a target, then on the side list, on the enmity list, you will see that target, which will make selecting the right monster a lot easier for the whole group. So it says shared UI elements, you know, company, chest, etc., and private ones will now be more easily distinguishable. That's fair enough. I do not see a difference. Hmm. But oh, it's the color, background color, that's it. So they'll have different colors. So it says to more easily discern when quick synthesis has been cancelled, the quit button will now be grayed out when selected. A message will also be displayed indicating the quick synthesis has been cancelled. Yeah, now what this is talking about is sometimes you might be doing quick synthesis, you click quit, and it will feel like it didn't do anything. So now they've made it show that, yeah, it is going to cancel. So it says the help test will now appear on screen when viewing the initial list of options available at the character creation. Cool. The search results window will no longer close after making a purchase via the market board. The name of die used on an item will now be displayed in its item's help, which is a good idea. So you can see, if you're interested to see what color someone's used, you, you will be able to just inspect and read it. You won't have to just guess by looking at it. So it so says the following subcategories have been added under PvP and the party interface. Okay. An error message will now be displayed when inputting an invalid name for friend invitations or blacklist registration. Players can now restore individual UI elements to their default positions via the HUD layout. The following options have been added to the character configuration menu. So let's see, an random number of messages. Okay, so basically this is like, do you wanna filter out people rolling? Cause they, they've added in random number rolling to the game so you can filter it out if you want so you, you don't see players because i'm sure players will be rolling a lot these days so it says for the following system menu category has been added so it's been adjusted so rather than support test is supporting information the confirmation prompt that appears when using return from the travel menu has been adjusted the confirmation prompt will no longer appear in areas 
where return can, cannot be used. When left open, the timer will now actively count down until recast is possible. The S button will now be grayed out if the recast timer has not yet reset. When appearing in the uh, log window, all items will now contain an item link. The item subcommand menu can now be used for the following. That's cool. The drying subcommand can be used for the following thing. Fine. So it says the auto run can now be cancelled using a gamepad even when entering text in the log window. Players Alliance will now be displayed in the Alliance chat. A group icon will now appear next to the names of friends organized into groups on your friend list. The party finder menu can now be opened by selecting the recruit notification in the log window. So these are just random changes to the interface that don't look to be anything special. So it says selecting an achievement from the log window will now open the achievements window. The following subcommand has been added when selecting a target's name in the log window. When using the following, the follow command. So what the, what this one basically means is that when you see someone's name, maybe they've spoken to you in game or in a party or whatever, you can just select them, uh, their name, and then select target, and it should select the person. And so when using the follow command, players will now follow their target as closely as possible. In accordance with changes to the follow command, the camera behind when following has been adjusted. The mouse setting category has been added to the system configuration for the PlayStation 4 version. When playing on the window version in windowed mode, the frame rate setting can now be based on your monitor's refresh rate. So, cool. So, depending on your um, monitor's refresh rate, it will you can you can adjust it. I personally keep mine set at 30 frames a second for the sake of consistent performance. So it says the following options have been added to the system configuration menu. Cool. So, so the following categories have been added to the key bind interface on the system menu. So yeah, so this one, this cancel macro is actually kind of important because sometimes you might be doing, especially in my case, a lot of crafting using macros. And the worst thing ever is when you press the wrong macro and then you completely mess up the craft. So this cancel macro um, option is now there to stop that happening. So it says to improve player accessibility, the following mouse features have been implemented. Cool, so it's a mouse sonar, which indicates the mouse's current position on screen has been implemented. So expanded mouse functionality has been implemented, allowing cursor tracking and size selection. The following text commands have been added. So additional action, toggle bet between on and off when no subcommand is specified, cancel macro <coughs> and the Hildebrand. So that's a, that's an interesting one. So it so said the random text command has been added, allowing players to randomly generate numbers in the log window. Okay. <coughs> so and this is probably this is usually used for you know it's it's just used between friends or parties to work out who should get an item or something like that. You know, people might use it for other reasons. The system info command has been removed. So it says, when submitting a bug report, please use the system information provided under the config menu or the game's client window. So it says the following placeholder has been added. It says, displays time remaining until specified action can be used again. So it says the following text command can no longer be used in succession to reduce communication overloading. Cool. It says the following expressions have been added to the auto translate dictionary. It's fair enough. This is obviously to do with 2.5 content. New music has been added. Special European characters will now be recognized by the auto translator's predictive text function. The auto translator's predictive text function will now display results, which include both current and previous words entered in the chat. So before entering, no thanks in the chat window will display the following result. Thanks for the offer after pass. Whereas now it will, hmm, okay. So they basically they made predictive text better for when you're using auto translate. So it said the PlayStation Four version now supports the use of PlayStation Move navigation and motion controllers. Cool. I don't really know much about that. So it says following issues have been addressed. 
let's see, an issue wherein available wheel names are displayed overlapping with the UI, an issue wherein depending on the position of character and angle camera, a portion of the attack indicator that the boss uses will not be displayed during a boss battle in the Keeper of the Lake dungeon. Let's see. An issue wherein a boss in the Keeper of the Lake dungeon may face a different direction while casting and when the attack is performed. The an attack hang on, sorry, these are known issues, obviously that so these are bugs still still in the game as of the launch of two point five, which I'm they were sure they'll fix later. There's an issue wherein only one of the characters will be KO'd instead of both when two characters attack the same time or deal damage to one another in PvP frontline encounter Borderland Ruins Thought. An issue wherein the character will walk at a different pace than the NPC when using skills such as Sprint or Swift Song and a cutscene begins while movement speed is increased. That's interesting, that's kind of funny. So if you have movement increasing abilities on during it before a cutscene starts and the your character might actually run quicker so it says an issue wherein the dice icon will not be displayed in the log that shows when using the text command an issue wherein hotbar settings and editing cannot be done using a gamepad or when riding a mount an issue wherein shards crystal clusters will no longer so it will not be displayed or able to be purchased from the estate grand retainer sales list when put on sale. Cool. So now I said new items. So see, there's a bunch of 110 new items that they've added in. They've added in the Lucis tools, which are, and as you can see, because they have the name, the same name as the Supras and obviously the original level uh, 50 gathering and crafting rewards, that this would suggest that you're upgrading your suppers because otherwise how are you gonna get to these how we do it that's what i'm still waiting to find out in game so demon hats 110 120 hats as well so i mean i'm guessing that you know not all of these are crafted you know these are gathered from different places like i'm assuming that some of the 120 stuff is gathered from let me see probably from like um, World of Darkness, for example. So we'll have to just see where these come from. The Emperor's new hat. These are the most beautiful headwear you never have seen. That's interesting. So new glasses as well. So a lot of, like I said, a lot of this gear you're just going to have to wait and see. The Artisan's apron and the Adept's gown. I don't know uh, what the Adept's gown is, but the Artisan apron is what everyone's going to be after if you're a crafter because it will mean you use one set of gear the adept's gown is what I'm, I'm curious about i'm curious if that's going to be a bigger upgrade than the artisan apron but we'll have to see i don't know if they're even related they could be something else so mandeville coty that's interesting so maybe we can buy the mandeville outfit let's see demon's skirt Emperor's new breeches, the most beautiful legwear you never have seen. So lots of random new items, Emperor's new boots. Obviously there's an Emperor set, so you need to see we need to see what it's for. It seems obviously for vanity. And then there's a bunch of new accessories as well. The platinum stuff, I will assume, is from crafting, that you craft the platinum stuff. Arranging platinum earrings, bracelets, platinum, 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 platinum. The Var Let's Ring. So, what we were also waiting for is a crafting ring, so who knows if it's this. But again, you have to wait and see, I'm afraid. Um, let's see, meals, ingredients, ingredients. Okay, so these are just new items, new crafting items, new reagents, stuff like that. A lot of these are bought from grand companies. New flooring for houses as well. That's be pretty cool. New furniture. So yeah, so now this is like the new furnitures. Miscellany. Yeah, wheels. These are the ethereal wheels that they've added in. Cool. Expansion of duties. Is that an amendment to an existing retainer employment contract allowing dismatchment to on privately owned properties okay so that's what that is so let's see so talons 
seal of mining mastery. So it says a document bearing Master Crafter's talent personal seal can be present in exchange for unparalleled mining equipment. So what these basically are, these items are, they are then used to upgrade your items from Supra to Lucis, which like I said I will cover in another video. Unstained mark log, a list of the right marks stained by the log's owner before the owner herself fled the battlefield to hunt another day. Okay. Psychus Tower, an expertly crafted representation of Psychus Tower as a furniture, that's interesting. So a bunch of new furnishings, new tables, tabletops. So th these are all just new furnishings, wall mounted. Okay, minions. Um, let's see, a model Magitek bit. Okay. It's a puff of darkness, which I'll assume this is from World of Darkness. Wind up gentlemen. We can assume that this comes from the Hildebrand quest. The Enkidu. So that's cool. The random other minion. And then some more um, ethereal wheel stuff. The Kirin Fife. So it says a magic pipe that when blown summons a mystical Kirin to your side. And this is what people are assuming that you get. You get maybe a Kirin mount when you've collected all of the other extreme primal mounts. Okay, so optional items are now available for purchase from the Mog Station. Cool. And it said that they are never pay to win. These will purely be for um, glamour reasons. Okay, new recipes have been added. So these are the new items. So this is these are furnitures from the looks of it. Dried wall, yep, furniture, furniture, furniture. Here we go. These are the 110 weapons, and these are the items you need to make them. So all of these are already available except for the Elegant Catalyst. So it's the Elegant Catalyst that we're going to have to get our hands on from the uh, previous Crystal Towers. So Blacksmith. Cool. That, the model magic tape, that's the minion. So you can craft the minion using Blacksmith. Murmurs, Daggers. Cool. And I'm guessing, yeah, so these 110 weapons as well this is how you make them and again they're using mostly items which are already available but also items which you know you need to get the elegant catalyst so it says armorer dead man's chest lapdog coral ball what shield cool goldsmith Let's see so that's the furniture two new pairs of glasses another furniture 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 Okay, here we go. These are the 110 accessories. Okay, so it doesn't look like there's a crafter's ring, but I guess we'll have to just see. Retain a counter, which is nice. Like can level work as furniture. Paint and lever. Hmm. Not sure what paint and lever is, but I guess we'll see. So Okay, so for Weaver furniture, but that, that's this is what I think a lot of people were expecting anyway, Artisan's Apron. And the, the advantage of it is it usually offers better stats than the original um, crafting chess pieces, but then you only have to have one. You have just one chess piece for all of your crafting sets rather than having to have like eight individual ones, which will be nice. So Master D Materia, I cut sealant, so I guess I'm going to have to pick up a bunch of those the second I log in to make sure that they don't sell out. Um, let me see, let me see. That's our alchemist. These are all the ethereal wheel stuff. Random other furnishings. Oh, yeah, so you, we can now craft spirit bond potions, which is awesome. And that will give a good use for the battle crafting material 2 and field crafting material 2 because they are mostly ignored at this point. So we can craft spirit bond potions and save ourselves thousands of Grand Company seals. Let's see. Tinker's Calm, I'm not 100% sure what that is, and these are the 110 weapons for, I'm guessing, for Summoner and Scholar. It's a Culinarian, Let's see, a bunch of tabletop stuff. So that's it, that is the patch notes. 
So I will link in the description the link to this um, set of patch notes as well. We're waiting for patch 2.5 to come online. So anyway, that's just my read through of the notes. Hope you liked it. Um, I know what I'm going to be going after the second the server logs in looking through that. So yeah, and then with patch 2.5, a lot of episodes to film, lots of guys incoming. I uh, will see as well if I have to update my guides of ideal crafting gear and you know things like that any quick money making schemes and whatever i will work through all of that so anyway guys thank you for watching and i will see you next time bye bye